Hey, you're tuned in to Gary Davis Presents, and I'm your host, Sherelle Hill. And we went live with Mayor Thomas Masters. I got to get his input on what he thought about the referendum for the movement of the municipal complex. Also, his thoughts on him having more power to veto. Let's go to what he said. There's a referendum that the mayor is leading, okay? A referendum is given to us by the Constitution of the United States when people feel dis disenchanted or disenfranchised or when they feel that their voices have not been heard or when they feel that there's a disconnect between the people and the council or the council or the governmental entity has made decisions but there's not in the best not in the best will of the people or not in the best interests of the people we had a situation here we were getting ready to build a brand new police station i mean brand new and we we're getting ready to build a brand new public works building shuffle in the ground overnight somebody saw another building somewhere in another community another neighborhood and said wow uh instead of building brand new why don't we just move everything there we can save the city money so that was a mistake it was a mistake because now they're telling us it's no longer saving you know that's number one Two, that's just like, you know, the deacons or trustees of a church wake up one morning and decide to buy another building. And they don't even ask the members, neither they tell the members, they just do it. And then, then you come back and say, guess what? We purchased a building for you all. You can't do that to us. This is, we have a, a municipal complex here. When you came here, you saw the police department, the fire department, the library, and the city hall. This is a landmark historical site here in Riviera Beach. So if you're going to start putting this one over there and this one over there, that's crazy to me, lack of a better word. So I stood up and I kept telling them, you can't do that to the people. You're not even, you haven't even asked them, one, two. You have not even gone in that community and asked the people who live in that community, how do you feel to have the police department and the fire department run up and down your neighborhood with sirens and lights? How do you feel having their presence in this neighborhood. First of all, it's unheard of anywhere in the United States of America to have a police department in a warehouse in an industrial complex. Your police departments, your city hall, even your fire departments are on your main boulevard, on your main thoroughfare. So this mayor, I mean, I don't really feel good about the fact that I'm on a different side of the council. You know, it's like, you know, council wants this and the mayor is saying this. I don't like that because we ought to be on the same page. But when you leave the people out, then that's when someone has to stand up, whether it's the mayor or whether it's one council person who did, council person Don Pardo, who represents Single Island, says this doesn't make economic sense, it doesn't make social sense, it doesn't make any kind of sense, this is crazy. So you can expect this mayor to be in the forefront and, and I'm saying, okay, let the people vote. Just let them vote of what, whether or not they want. I know you've already purchased the building, but so what? People buy things every day and they change their mind or they come up with another option. And at the end of the day, you know, there's several options. We bought the building, but it's big enough to have a, um, um, an event hall, a banquet hall, a great facility, maybe a training facility, whatever. But if none of that worked, at the end of the day, hey, we bought it, sell it. Get your money back. And let's keep it, let's keep everything on the complex. But the main thing is, let the people speak. Let the people vote. This complex doesn't belong to Masters. It doesn't belong to Jones or Jackson or Smith. It belongs to the people. They should have the right to say whether or not they want a police department in a residential area where, where there's some industry or they want to keep everything on the complex. And I'm saying, don't be fooled. Keep it on blue. Keep it on blue hair. So we'll lead that fight. We'll win that fight. Because I can tell you the people that I've talked to in, in my little world say it's shameful to even think about it. We want our complex. And we don't want to put, even the Bible tells you, you don't put new wine in old bottles. It doesn't work. Build it brand new and build it here. There's another uh, referendum that uh, a petition committee um, put together. They actually been talking about it for months and maybe a year. Mr. Mayor, you know, you really don't have any power. You really don't have much authority. You really can't effectuate change. You know, you're basically a cer ceremonial mayor, and I am. Uh, you do job fairs, you do crime prevention programs, the educational piece, the senior piece, the veteran piece. 
but yet you sign all the checks and yet you sign all the bills that are passed. We want the mayor not necessarily to be a strong mayor, but to be a stronger mayor. So they have put together a referendum piece that extends one authority of the mayor, which is the uh, power or the authority to veto. I have it now as mayor, but I only can veto ordinances. But this uh, referendum, if passed by the people, will give the mayor authority to uh, veto resolution as well. So it's not just one piece of legislation, it's any piece. The president has veto power over every bill. The governor has it over every bill, every bill, and other mayors have it. So that can be done without changing the charter and making the charter, uh, giving the mayor strong mayor, you know. But don't do that, you know, because that would take a, you know, that would take almost act of God. You have to educate people. You have to change the, the whole form of government. The mayor becomes the person that, that runs the day-to-day -day operation of the city instead of the city manager. No, excuse me. Keep our system the way it is. Just extend one little authority of the mayor. So if there's a 3-2 vote and the mayor feels this is something wrong with this, it's not in the best interest of the people or whatever standards that we want to use, depending on who the mayor is, he can veto it. But guess what? When he vetoes, it goes back to the council. And the council can override, just like Congress, just like Tallahassee, just like other uh, cities with a super majority. So four votes can just say, well, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, but we're going on with it anyhow. That sort of gives you a balance and a check with the council without becoming a strong mayor. And um, so that committee put that together. Do I support it? Absolutely, because I do think it's important to at least give the, the mayor a voice. You know, sometimes I don't even have a voice, I have an opinion. But if you don't have a vote, or if you don't have a veto, it, it doesn't count, you don't count, you're just there. So I support that, but I'm actually leading the referendum on um, the keeping the municipal complex. Don't be fooled, keep it on blue. <laughs>